are live. We are Johnny. back. <laughs> yes. How are you doing, Johnny? How's everything? And I'm doing outstanding. Yes. We're back again for another show. And listen, I'm loving it. We have great guests today, bro. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Happy Friday to everybody just tuning in. I see a comment on LinkedIn. Deborah Eskef checking in from Edinburgh. Deborah, very good to see you here. I know some people are going to continue tuning in throughout throughout the evening. Um, Johnny, how'd you, how'd you, <laughs> you know, we're, we're still in the process of finding some music, you know, uh, so how, know. How'd, you, how'd you like that second track? <laughs> I like the second track. I mean, it looks like that's the closest we'll get. Right, like, right. Okay, we have to explain to the people a dilemma. Yes. We do not want to have copyrighted song on the show and we use a subscription, you know, to get our music. But unfortunately, the music we want to play they are not part of that subscription so we continue to search so eventually what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna i'm just gonna give up and trying to wish somebody at uh epidemic sound and say listen you got to help me out here <laughs> right exactly you know? <laughs> exactly you know in, in the me in the meantime we have the <laughs> <laughs> you know we just got that few seconds of that you know it doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt <laughs> no it doesn't hurt <laughs> They, they want to catch us with a few seconds. It's really right. uh, more right. than a few seconds. You know? more than a minute. Then oh, next thing you know, they mute it somewhere. So it's <laughs> difficult to happen. But, exactly. And I'm glad we have some people uh, who, who tune in. And uh, who, who, I wonder, you know, how do we sound? I, how we come in a course to them? Because it's difficult from my side to gauge, you know, how we sound like. And yeah. if they can let us know, give us a thumbs up. You know that'd be great. Let us know where you're listening, where you where you're following us, because we're in different platform right now. We we on YouTube. Uh, let me see LinkedIn on LinkedIn Live. Yep, and also on uh, and on Facebook as well. Also yes. on Facebook. So so yeah. that is perfect. That yes. is perfect. And you had a fantastic three days, man. I, I saw your post. You had a fantastic three days. Oh my gosh! Tell yes. us about it. Yes, yes, yes. So. Uh, uh, and in business perfect timing because here she is, my fiance, Anna Hill, giving us a thumbs up from a LinkedIn oh, Live. Right. Hold on, where is it? Oh, there it is. I have to bring it down. There here. it is. Right, giving us a thumbs up, saying that we're good to go. We we just finished uh, uh, co-hosting the virtual access experience for the People of Video Conference in Albany, New York, hosted by uh, Dan Courier, uh, and this is for video creators. Uh, and professionals who are looking to, you know, uh, get, get into the world of content creation, particularly video, and especially heavy emphasis on uh, YouTube development, right? And also we had a little bit of LinkedIn there because Judy Fox was there, but we get mm-hmm. to, we got to we got to interview all of the speakers from the conference, and we had a virtual access, and this was awesome. You know, it was a it was a great experience, always a humbling experience. Uh, but we did two back to back all day live streams, right? From I'm talking about from eight to five day one, and then day two was ten to five. This was an all day affair, so and oh, you were having this, fun. You this, didn't feel it. You didn't feel we, it. Then, yeah, you know, good energy. <laughs> the stream didn't stop. You know, everything went smooth, no hiccups. So yeah, it was really good. And it those are really the good. type of stream we love, man. And we missed you because uh, we 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 were hoping that you you would be able to come, but you know, you had some complications. Man, you guys couldn't listen, attend. I had my ticket. I yeah. had my ticket. I had everything ready to go. And the last minute, one of my kids ended up catching COVID. Yes. So I'm like, oh, man, wait, there's no way. I was coming. My wife was coming with me. And we're like, well, there, there's no way we're going to 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 make it up there. Yeah. Not, not like that. So so we're crossing our finger. Hopefully they have it again next year. But you, you gave me the bad news. <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like good. It's not too bad because uh, uh, the the plan was always to host people a video in uh in earlier in the spring because mm-hmm. September is there's so much stuff going on because we have leap into yeah. podcasting. We also had the video cre- creators university in August and, uh, and then there was also content marketing world. There's so much stuff going on. So, uh, they want to kind of like separate it from all those conferences and have, uh, some space. So they're going to host it in May, but this May is going to be too close. So what they're going to do is yeah. they don't want to leave a big gap. So, uh, people of video is going to do something virtually this may so we can start full steam ahead may 2024 in person again so now if they do it in may there's there's a 
you know, in May is graduation <laughs> time frame. Now. It right. depends when in May. Yes. <laughs> you see, my ah, I see my business mind is already kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, May is graduation, you know, I was talking about seniors graduating. Right. Um, That's true. You know, middle schools and all of that. So if they do it, like, maybe beginning of May, end of the April time frame. Right. That's probably that probably will work yeah. because so if we'll you see. go at end of May, too many people will be you know, and that's my opinion. So got it, that's my got that's it. my Haitian two cents. Yes, that's your day, your day good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my day good. So I said day good, bam no. See you later, your bad friend. See you bad later. Hey, you better bum one back. Oh, well, tell us, man. Let's let tell us about our guest. We we have a guest tonight. You know. This is historical. This is like this is it. This is our first guest. We'll never we'll never forget this day right here. Yes. This is our first yes. guest. And you know, I can have think of a better guest to come on the show. I've known this person for you know, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll save that for a little bit. But I've known him for a very very yeah. long time, so we can we can uh we can talk about that when we bring him on. So without yeah. further ado, uh we're going to introduce Jean-Pierre Louis, he is the founder and CEO of Capra Care. Capra Care is a trusted pillar in the Haitian community, doing amazing work in Fonfred, IET. And my gosh, like there's like this, there's like so many good things I can say about it, but let's bring him on and let's have a chat and hear from him without further ado. Let's do the <laughs> Jean-Pierre, <Yes. laughs> Jean-Pierre Louis, Jean. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. <laughs> drop out. Drop that again for you. Oh man, he was what dancing. is going on, Gene? Yes, what is up, Gene? Loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for having me. I am very happy um, to be here with you. And hey, listen to be the first guest, uh, even better. Yes, you know, that's yes. the way you set it up. You know, I like. I definitely, it is. You know, I, I used to play baseball, so leading off was always my thing. That's so, oh. <laughs> there, you go. there you go man I, we're happy to have you man we're happy to have you i'm excited to to listen i've been since we announced it i had my questions right here waiting for you um, <laughs> yes. yeah. and a lot of people reach out to me as well and i was like okay who's who's jean pierre i'm like you, you gotta go we got the link in there all you have to do is, is click on his name look it up and, and you'll see what's going on and I'm gonna let F Fulgin do the honor. Fulgin yes. do the honor to introduce you because I got too many questions. <laughs> right, uh, and let's start it off, Johnny. So, uh, Gene. So, uh, let I'll let you introduce yourself uh, and a little bit about Capricare, and we'll take it from there. Sure, um, Jean Pierre Louis. So, I am the founder, president, CEO of Capricare. Um, Capricare is a global health organization that is providing access to healthcare in Haiti, where we have five core programs from healthcare to prevention to training locals to become community health workers, youth education program, mental health big time, as well as um, disaster relief um, in Haiti. We've been doing this work in Haiti since 2009. Um, but Kappa Care was a dream of mine that um, started since I was nine years old when I first came to the United States. Um, and I was in the fifth grade and the kids were calling me Haitian, you know, this, this, and that, you got HIV, go back to Haiti, and I'm like, whoa, um, okay, I'll, I'll go back to Haiti, but I'm going to go back to Haiti and make Haiti a more productive place to live by creating job opportunities to organization. I didn't know what that was going to be. That was just me being a nine-year-old in the fifth grade in Brooklyn and just says, yeah, I'll go back, and I'll go back and make Haiti better um, with the education I'm going to acquire here. And here we are, lo, lo and behold, some 30 something years later and Kappa K is now 14 years old. That wow. is amazing. I remember I met you. I, I started as the, uh, associate executive director of HCC in 2010. Uh, this was right after the Haitian earthquake. Uh, so later that spring, I, I, I landed that position and I believe the New York Haitian leadership coalition uh, which was first a fellowship was formed that same year uh yeah. towards the end of the year and you were in the first cohort of the fellowship 
And also the executive director, Dr. Peck, was also in the first cohort and we would host meetings at HCC. And that's how I've known you since then. So, so yep. 12 years, 12 years, and you've been making an amazing impact and continue to do so since you've basically founded Capra Care. So how does that feel? You know, um, it, it feels good. Um, it feels good, but this is something that I've always envisioned because capital care means an act of courage. Um, that's what the word, the, the definition of capital care is. It's, it's, it's a combination of two words that I put together and I give a self definition. And that's because Haiti is not a place that is easy to work in. But I know that once we go in, there is no exit plan. There is no getting back. So for us to be here, still doing it, still consistent, still determined, still driven, still making an impact in Haiti is definitely a blessing, but it's definitely a good, a feel good uh, feeling of pride um, to be doing this work. Yes. Yes. Johnny, I know you have some questions. I know oh, you're man. so excited. Take Listen, it away. Man. Take it away. I, I, I'm, I've been waiting, you know, but I have to ask you a couple questions in Creole because, you know, Pilman got okay so mm -hmm. low 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 so you talked about the idea came in since you were nine years old yes can you describe to us the feeling when you actually get, get got to haiti and you're getting your hands dirty and you you're building this this building and you inviting people and you actually seeing that dream become a reality can you describe to us that feeling and why it's so important to go back to that area and build uh capital care you know, it's a feeling of, of um, like I said, excitement and pride um, because I know this is the people where, you know, that I had a vision to support since I was nine years old. And I grew up in that community, right? So I left at nine years old, but I still have family back home. My grandmother, who passed away at 113 years old, um, was in fourth grade when I was bringing the idea of Kappa Kia. So to see me coming back to mobilize the entire community, you know, talking with people about, you know, their needs and what can be done and, and would this work? Is this something that they definitely need? Would they support this um, to get behind it? You know, it was, it was, was definitely um, incredible, incredible to be doing this because, you know, these are the streets that I used to, you know, walk. Um, hmm. These are the streets that I used to run behind a, a sugar cane trailer and, and, and catch a, 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 a ride to get home. These are the same street I used to fight after school with all the kids. You know, you seven, you eight, you school, school let go, and you, you, you throw in rocks behind each other, you fight. And so it brought back a lot of, uh, how would I say, nostalgic feelings. You say, wow, you know, you come back here to help make this place a better place uh, for everybody here. So definitely a feeling of pride. Yeah. Earlier you mentioned, you you explaining in English what Caprica is, but I would like you to explain to us in Creole because for Queer audience, just in case you want to know who you are, or if you are in the block of the city, who you are, 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 qui était les fort capra et puis apparemment chez ces immigrants qui étaient yo venir dans sorti Italie yo venir dans aux États-Unis et puis fort capra qu'on a pris éducation là il vient créer film avec lui mais tout film mi si yo toujours bon mission euh justice pour aider faire un monde là puis bien 
Je me dis, wow, si je suis sorti de l'Italie, je suis allé créer un bel film qui a fait un grand impact. Même si je suis en Haïti, je suis allé créer un grand impact en Haïti. Je me dis, ah, moi, je suis parti de Capra. Et puis, je me dis, ok, mais Haïti, j'ai besoin de plus de bagages. Qui est ce Haïti a besoin? Haïti a besoin de Haïti a besoin Haïti a besoin de l'amour. L'amour, en anglais. Il a besoin de l'amour. Il a besoin de l'amour. Il a besoin de l'amour. Mais, moi, dans le domaine santé publique là notre domaine santé il me dit qui est soin capra qui est on a me dit ah mais nous voilà ici on place qui difficile qui au besoin de mobiliser monde pour prendre action avec eux mais n'importe qui qui prend action pour supporter capra qui est supporter le développement supporter Haïti à travers Haïti on a fait développement Haïti ça son action courage lié après les après les programmes de mobilisation capra qui est yo action courage Qu'est-ce qui ça capte qu'elle fait? Est-ce que je prends soin patient? Qui 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 genre de de bagages fait? Nous avons cinq grands programmes. Nous baille mon soin même si je pas capable de payer. Mais nous toujours demander une contribution. Parce que leur font un programme côté au docteur, au infirmier, au gain prévention, on baille soins santé mentale, on baille éducation avec un petit monde, on peut dire on fait des rois staff pour faire des devoirs, pour faire une formation, un développement professionnel. Si vous avez tout ça, vous avez une concrétisation, vous avez plus bon service pour faire dans le monde, vous ne pas respecter. Il y a pour le gratis. Vous avez un gratis, pas de gratis, pas de gratis. C'est ça que nous faisons dans le monde. Mais tout, nous avons un plus gros programme dans le domaine de la santé, c'est le dépistage cancer colmatrice. En plus, on ne pas que les femmes haïtiennes, il y a un numéro de cancer qui a détruit les femmes haïtiennes, c'est le cancer de la matrice. C'est un cancer qui a joué un bonheur, qui a joué un cancer, qui a détecté le sou, et puis même quand il y a un bon traitement pour nous retirer le sou. C'est un cancer, c'est un pelvic cancer, right? Um, cervical cancer. Cervical cancer. Cervical, cervical mm -hmm. cancer. Oh, wow. And, uh... I didn't know that. And uh, for go those ahead. of our um, English-speaking audience, can you go over a list of like the services that Cabra Care provides? Yeah, so we're in healthcare. So primary care, we have doctors and nurses. Um, within our healthcare services, one of our pillars is cervical cancer screening and treatment. Um, a lot of folks do not know that cervical cancer is the leading cause of death for leading cause of cancer-related death for Haitian women in Haiti. So since 2017, Capricay has been providing that kind of uh, um, services in Lekai. So we go all over throughout the South to do mobile clinics, which also features cervical cancer screening um, where we do these mobile clinics. But in our facility as well, we do that. We also have two other sites. So we have three main sites that we provide that kind of service in. In, in our, in our um, office, this place called TFET and Campere, we have two satellite sites that we also provide screening in. Beside that, we are big on prevention. Um, big on prevention within the community, in the schools, school-based health education, uh, mental health services. Uh, we are huge on that. As you know, Haiti you know, suffers numerous repeated trauma, whether it's assassination of head of state, whether it's political instability, whether it's a parents who cannot pay for their child uh, education when schools are about to go, you know, to open, they are they're stressing. Whether it's a child who lose their, uh, you know, their, their parents, uh, a father, a mother, uh, um, or a grandparents, and their whole life change, all of those things can, you know, devastate a family or devastate an individual. So mental health is extremely important for us. Professional development is um, and education is another big key services of our program. So I'll give you an example. We've been, we've trained seven um, cycles. We have the, we've done seven cycle of community health workers training. That's where we train local individuals to become community health workers, where they can also become first responders. Especially last year, August 14, when the Haiti earthquake happened, because we trained those folks, we were able to call on them and not having to put people here in the United States to go to Haiti and do mission trips or mission to help relief. Because those folks already know their community. They know who were, who were already affected. They were able to get around. So we do a lot of community health workers training. And of course, through, um, because we've been experiencing disasters left and right since 2010, since we first opened. So we have become very competent and able to respond to disasters. 
So we also have a disaster response program as well. Those are the five core programs of Capital Care. You know, I'm, I'm always um, questioning because I, I left Haiti. The last time I visited Haiti has been a while. But I did not go to any hospitals to, to check some stuff that they have. I'm in the healthcare field, and I deal with the imaging portion of healthcare. You know, with radiography, CAT scan, by yes. side. Okay. Um, is that something you have back there? Do you have imaging services such as x-ray, ultrasound, or a CT scanner or anything like that? No, we haven't get to that level. Um, we started to do the ultrasound. But when it gets to that kind of level, we partner with the other healthcare facilities in Okai and we refer our guys over there to get those um, higher level of services. But eventually, that's where we will um, get into as well. Okay. I, I, I'm always want to know about this because, you know, when you're in the field and you're Haitian, and it's not that many of us in that field. So whenever I'm talking to somebody who's, who's, the, who's in the healthcare field who's doing something in Haiti, I always have this type of question because it's when, when you see it here, it plays such a vital role in healthcare. Mm -hmm. You know, you technically, um, the eyes of that doctor, right? So you're yeah, yeah. helping see what's going on in the inside so he can make a proper diagnosis. And for physician back home, a lot of them, does not have that capability. So they yeah. solely depend on the clinical impression to make a diagnosis. And they're very, very good at it. Very, very good at it. But every now and then I think about, wow, that would bring so much help if they have those type of equipment to make the decision a little bit easier. Because it's so hard to diagnose somebody with a fracture and not being able to see it's a fracture. Yeah. Yeah. And well, you know, as we build capacity, these are the things that, you know, eventually we'll be able to um, we'll do. So we won't be too far away from doing that. Like right now, one of the, uh, within the next two years, we are planning to build um, a, a, a different healthcare facility. So where we are right now, we have outgrown it. So mm -hmm. when we build the new uh, uh, structure, these are the sort of type, of, type of level of services that we will start to get really into. So yeah. with, with, with your viewers' support, we'll make it happen. Yeah. And, you know, and then it's, it's something that both of you just said that goes hand in hand with Johnny saying that, you know, it's, uh, you know, the how rare it is to have people in that particular profession. And and also now you, Jeannie, just mentioned that, you know, you, you you're building the capacity, you you are you're running out of space and you need to expand now. So how do you go about what strategies have you used to build your team, to build capacity and get people involved in Capricare? Well, it's still with partnership. Right? It's the way community. Um, you can't do things by yourself. You really have to bring the community of, um, in. You have to be transparent. You have to show them you know, exactly when they invest their ten dollars or they donate their twenty five dollars. Where does it go? What do you do with that? So we provide reports on um, on these things. We show you know we let them know what are the challenges, what are the values, what are the successes. But what can be done if you believe in the way that we do? What can be done? If you actually invest in the work, not just congratulate. You know, there's a long line of people congratulate, congratulating, but you can't do things without money, right? Money is king. So with folks' support, we are able to expand and grow and provide better services. So that's how we continue to grow um, every single year, whether to challenges and barriers. That's how we continue to expand our services and amplify our work. And, and how do you go about uh, identifying the right health professionals uh, to, uh, for the Capricare team? Well, it starts with um, our board members, right? So I'm big on recruitment. I'm big on recruitment. Uh, like I said, I used to play baseball. So scouting is something that, I, you know, I grew up with. You watch, you do your homework, you do your research. So I do that. Um, so we do our research on, you know, who cares about, you know, about global health? Who cares about Haiti? Who cares about humanity? So you know, who has the skill sets, who show, who, who have success in this kind of work. So board members, whether you, you are recruiting board members to help provide leadership, whether you recruit volunteers, whether you recruit other folks in the domain to join your committee, your staffs in Haiti, how you train those folks, uh, which corporations, which foundation um, supports the work that we do the, uh, uh, in Haiti or in global health. Make a phone call, send an email. 
you know, word of mouth. Somebody said, hey, you know, I know about this foundation. I know about this person. Next thing you know, you set up a meeting with them. So everything is community for us in terms of partnership um, for, our de for our continuous development. You know, for Jen, really quick, you mentioned earlier about transparency, and I want you to repeat this in Creole because it's so important. Parce que dans la communauté noire, mon gain parfois mon yo parle même le moment de un rapport. L'homme mon bon cob, lui dit mais qu'est-ce qu'on va pour aller faire tel bagage, tel bagage, c'est pas acheter, l'acheter dans mon son cadeau le bar pour aller de l'autre monde. Lui important en pile pour faire un rapport pour montrer côté cob la base. Est-ce qu'on a Expliquez ça pour moi en créole parce que je suis un peu plus de même en tant que un CEO pour une grande organisation comme ça qui a parlé ensemble avec nous et pour dire que c'est important pour rester transparent et pour faire rapport avec les gens qui même qui bon même si c'est à 10 dollars. Oui, mais c'est vraiment important parce que nous avons une histoire qui a parlé des programmes haïtiens, qui a nous pas mettre des structures en place, nous pas faire bonne formation, bah et ça y est. Et même 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 le monde est dans le système dans l'US côté transparence c'est transparence c'est tout bagaille. En 2009, nous avons commencé avec 20 volontaires dans le C'est C'est pour ça que nous avons expliqué qu'ils ont lié important pour nous honnêtes pour nous bailler là pour passer. Là on bail 10 dollars la commande sans faire avec lui. Là on bon 20 dollars la commande sans faire avec lui. Depuis en 2009, nous commencé février 2009. Dim qui sorti de février 2009, nous avons connu là en mois c'était pas 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 qu'au fini. On dit arrivé sorti février 2009, arrivé en août 2022. Dim année, dim mois, ma bonne rapport. Hey, Fogen, you need to give him a, a little music for this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like that man. We remember that because we know that we have a system that we have we are big in transparency. And sometimes we have a lot of action that we don't understand. You think that the moment of a report is frequent, frequent, or if we don't have a lot of But it's important to do these things. But I, I, I thank you for, for that answer. And, and I'm, I'm glad your organization think that way because you're dealing with different category of people and when when you're getting those type of help it's very important to show the folks hey this is where it goes plus for those of you who have organization out there this is a way to bring more money to your organization because if i donate to an organization and the organization is able to say yeah we did x y and z with your money and i can see what happening of course next time there's no question asked i'm gonna donate again or yes. even give more but if you're having difficulty to tell me what you do, I'm not gonna argue with you. I'm, I'm just, I'm just won't be able to donate next time. Right. So, <laughs> you know, so, right. so, so uh, yeah, I, I really like the the way you guys do things. Yeah, and I've always appreciated the specifics. For example, uh, when you would come to me and Dr. Peck, and whenever there was something going on in Haiti, where it's a hurricane or any natural disaster, you would say specifically, you know, because like you know, we usually packing big doom and sending all kind of stuff to Haiti, right? Where you would say no, we specifically want, you know dried food spaghettis canned goods right because you know we don't want foods that's going to be spoiled we want specific things like a tooth toothpaste toothbrush toilet paper and also if you donate x amount of dollars it's going to purchase x y and z so you are very thorough and very specific and that transparency goes a long way because we don't get we can it's safe to say we don't get that too often in our community when it comes to donating to other uh you know um people doing work on the ground when it comes to ngos or whatnot so that is very appreciated Thank you. Yeah, very, very important, man. I, I like that. Yes. I, I have another uh, huge question for you, and it's not big. For those people who's going to watch this, how do they get in touch with you? How do they connect with you um, so they can connect with the organization and maybe even help the organization, maybe volunteer, maybe giving money, or maybe doing anything the reason i'm asking this because right now it's very important because you know we're in the hurricane season and if you yeah. if you're in haiti you know what that means during hurricane season the rain is an issue without the hurricane and you can imagine when there's a hurricane what, what happened yeah. so how do they get in touch with your organization if they want to do something it's easy you can send us an email um info i n f o 
um, at capocare.org or simply go on the website, capocare.org. Um, and you can see you know, uh, um donate button. You can donate there. You can see our phone number. It's um, also public. I believe it's 347-723-1405. You can call. You know, we'll get back to you immediately or we'll pick up immediately. So email, go online, make a donation, make a phone call. We'll be there. And if you Google, just you just put Kappa Care. And it'll show you all the different type of work that we've done. We are a reputable organization. We are very proud of that. You know, last year when the earthquake happened, the mayor of New York City in the city itself um, selected but four um, patient-led organizations um, to provide support. And Kappa Care was one of the four organizations. You know, it was Kappa Care. It was um, um, Partners in Health, Hope for Haiti, IAT Community Trust. These were the four organizations. And that's because of our track records of doing great work. And, and we did that. And it's sure enough, within a year, we also provide a whole annual report. It's, the annual report is on our website. You can also find it on our website. And you'll see exactly where all of those folks who donated to Capital Care for that relief work, where their money goes. Um, a year later, we still, we still recover. Recovery does not happen overnight. Right? You don't solve everyone's problem overnight. So here we are also a year later, we are already working on our annual report and to release that before the year ends. So we have a good track of working of, of doing the work. You know, just, you know, if you don't believe me, go see for yourself. Um, and anytime, you know, as Haiti gets better right now, we have some protests going on due to high cost of living, um, uh, high price of, of gas. Right now, uh, one gallon of gas um, equals 30 American dollars. So as a result, the past three weeks, they've been ongoing um, protests to bring about better change so folks can live better. But once that comes down, you're more than welcome to come visit Kappa Care and meet the staff and see the work that we do hands-on for yourself. Amazing. We, ha we have a comment from uh, Deborah. Uh, Deborah says, Kappa Care makes an incredible difference in the immediate community and also with their outreach mobile clinics to the hard to reach remote areas. Caprica has such a professional and determined team. Donations go toward keeping this phenomenal team progressing and expanding their reach. Caprica and Jean-Pierre Louis are the real deal. Nice, nice, nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Man, that, that's that's amazing, man. I, I, I like seeing these things you know, coming across our desk when we, we're having people like you and, and sit down to have a great conversation. Because what happened is whenever you have a couple of Haitians somewhere, we're bound to talk about politics, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. But it's good to, to, to let people know it's not always about politics or about music. But there's real people out there making a difference. You might not know them, Okay, because they're not, you know, up front and, and they don't give them that many airplays. So that's what Haitian Creators Live is all about. Let's put those people up front. Let's talk to them. Let's know what they do. Let's recognize the organization and, and, and let's just expose it and, and more people know, you know, what's going on. But uh, one thing I want to ask, the staff that you have in here, like your pay staff, it's very yes. important to tell those people, those pay staff are Haitian, right? All Haitian. You know, all Haitian. So all Haitian. And, the, and I'll say something about that part too. You know, the first three years, they were all volunteers. Now, hmm. I had no choice. You know, we didn't have the money. We didn't have the backing. Mm -hmm. But what I had was my words. And I just told them, I said, hey, you know, I want to help make Haiti better. You want to help make Haiti better. All of those folks were not working, but yet they were young professionals, 21, 22. I said, just believe in, believe in the work that we're going to be doing together. We're going to be partnering together with you. And then they did. So after three years of volunteering, we started to get some support, funds started to come in. So they slowly become on stipend. From stipend, we started getting um, our, our programs funded. More donations come in. We start doing events, board members' contribution, more individuals who are supporting our work on a monthly basis. Those kind of things create some kind of stability for us. So now we have all our staff in Haiti are being paid. And that makes a tremendous difference because we were in a position where we're not able to pay them. 
But often time you find organizations who are able to pay folks in Haiti, and yet they push in volunteer. How do you push volunteer in a country that has 70% of the people not working and you ask them to volunteer? You're not going to have success that way. So for us, it, we have to start that way, but you often find organizations that are able to you know, do better and they're not compensating they're not giving people, you know, uh, um, something to live, you know. Even when they volunteer, they, they have to pay gas, right, to come to yeah. their place, you know, to go home, you know, to buy something to eat. So that, that's how we started Modest with Volunteers, and now we have all our staffs are on payroll in Haiti. Yeah. And that makes and it's a important. huge difference, oh, yeah. huge difference. Yeah, yeah. because now you, you're not on, only providing care, but you're also giving employment to people otherwise would not have any other employment. And I'm talking about professional folks, okay? Most people don't understand that the majority of Haitian living in Haiti are young, young professional individual. And they are very, very intelligent, very smart. I mean, if the world know, I mean, I know they know, but the, the, the group of people that they have over there, the capability they have, the things that they're doing with nothing. And whenever you give them an opportunity and you can see, like, man, outstanding. Well, outstanding. Johnny, that, that's like exactly that. what yeah. it is, right? Because these were folks who were 21, 22, 23. These are the folks who are now the directors of the program. Hmm. They run the program. The chief operating officer is Chantal. She, she's been with us for over 10 years. Wow. You know, Capricare was her first job. You know, <laughs> you have Molino, who also gra freshly graduated during that time um, from the uh, Ipsac University in Lake High. He is now director of finance and, uh, and, and, um, and um, operations. You know, we <laughs> have a young nurse, you know, who's also director of prevention. Our doctors who are directors of the program. These are all folks who are living in Haiti. We don't have a single staff from abroad who comes to Haiti to help run Capricare. This Capricare is strictly 100% in Haiti, Haitian led by folks who are living in Haiti. So, c'est mon Haïti qui a dirigé le programme. Mm -hmm. Et yes. pas l'autre monde en dehors, sur l'autre bord de l'eau, qui a venu dire qui j'ai pour nous faire. C'est nous-mêmes, yes. nous former, nous faire formation, nous entraîner, nous, nous, nous faire évaluation, tout, pour nous assurer que le travail a bien fait hein, et pour nous garder une stabilité souterraine. Yes. Outstanding, man. Outstanding. I, I, I don't know, Fogin. He, he answered all of my questions, man. This is, yeah. <laughs> this, this is like us blowing my mind because usually you, we always a little bit reserved when we're talking about organization and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But having an organization was run by Haitian and, and they actually live in that area and they're providing the care. And it's, it's make a big difference. It's not just an organization was just come in was collecting money and they the majority of the funds just go to the travel for the directors and all those people right. but to be able to employ some folks to make them do the work right there it's 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 amazing i mean i said i'm gonna let fulgin ask the rest of the question because yeah. you, you just blow my mind because we do not have that many organizations who's doing what you guys are doing absolutely what what that is impact right because when you have a country that has 70 percent of folks unemployed each time that you can employ one person that's a huge impact impact that you make and i want to get very clear kappa care is not about aid we're not an aid organization we are a development com uh, organization that's the reason why we we, we we train we constantly train and empower folks to provide services that has great impact on the community so we're not there to give out rice and beans that the next day you're going to be hungry. We're, there to, we're not there to give you fish. You've heard of the famous proverb, right? We're here to show a man how to fish, so therefore that man can eat for a lifetime. That's exactly what we do with our staff in Haiti. That's exactly what we do in the community in Haiti. Yes, yes, making an impact and actually providing a, a intelligent solution to the matter and not just continuing to put a band-aid on the problem. That's correct. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. That is amazing. It's, 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 man, I, I, you know, I like what he said. We are not an aid organization. I like yeah. that. Because what people don't understand, I think the country do not just need AIDS. The country need 
development okay those folks are capable to work and they work hard they're capable to produce and they can produce quality work if they have an opportunity to do so so be able to teach them how to fish is better it doesn't serve a nurse any any good when you just send them a bag of rice compare a nurse who's employed and providing care to her community and the majority of those people is people that she or he probably knows very well and to be able to provide that support with pride it's 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 make a big difference and i and That's i'm exactly. hoping yep. and i'm hoping other organization will, will reach out to you guys and, and get the blueprint and say hey how do i build something in the north or in the capital yeah. or, or somewhere because where we lose part of this sometimes is organization don't talk to organization men we don't have that many mentors i should be able to see this program and see your information and say you know what i'm gonna reach out to jean pierre or i'm gonna reach out to full james and say hey how did you do x y and z because i like your blueprint can you help me out you know and well, and that's how simple it's to, done <laughs> our goal is to is to replicate our model throughout haiti so anyone who's interested in knowing exactly how they can do something similar to the in their community we will do it and that's why i said we're not about aid we're about development that's why i also say we train locals to become community health workers from that point on they can become your future directors too because that's how we actually started you know that's the reason why when we partner with other organizations we don't ask for rice and beans and, and and things to just give away we ask for equipment you know that's the reason why yeah. when we when we partner with folks they don't just come to haiti to do mission trips and then they leave no Whatever they, they come in to do, they come in to empower our staff. They come in with equipment that they're going to leave behind. So, therefore, our staff can use those same equipment to continue doing service work in the community. Outstanding. Here we go. Excellent. Here we go. Excellent. Um, I can tell you, when, when you get the x-ray machine, you can tap, you can tap my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> because Let's I, go. I, I, <laughs> I've, I've been I've been doing I've been in the radiology field for over 20 years, but I've seen it all. I've done it all. I've, I, I did it in the military. I did it in the civilian world. I did it as a contractor. I mean, you name it. I've I did it as an instructor. I mean, I cannot say I can give an X-ray machine because I know how, I know how, <laughs> how expensive they are. But <laughs> I, I can definitely provide training that I can give the knowledge. There you there go. You there you go. Yeah. And, and, we'll, and we'll get we'll get a, a you know a foundation a donor a hospital that will give us the machine, right? Yeah. And then you come to Haiti and you do what? You train exactly. the folks who cannot do this work, right? Exactly. Every six months or every year, we'll update, we'll upgrade the knowledge yep. as well, right? Keep the yep. knowledge fresh, you know that exactly. kind of stuff. We will get them books that they can continue to read and you know up, um, and build their knowledge. That's what mm -hmm. we do, you know. Uh, we are a charitable organization, but you don't see things. We don't promote poverty. You know, uh, we don't pro pro promote the poverty, uh, how you call it, the poverty uh, uh, um, um, propaganda, for lack of a better word, right? Mm -hmm. Because Haiti is not poor. Haiti is a country that is overexploited. There's resources in Haiti. Haiti is a land of opportunity and growth. Like you mentioned, under 50% of the population is, is uh, 50% of the population is under the age of 21. So mm -hmm. Haiti is one of the youngest countries, you know, in the world full of talented people, eager to learn, eager to grow. The only reason why you see there's so much protest going on is because people, you have too many young folks with all this built up energy, you don't have a place to put it, right? But if you employ them. Okay, we lost oh, Gene we there lost for a them. second. That's okay, uh, Gene, yeah, you can okay. uh, try to come back in, but oh my yes, gosh, so listen. Back. Yeah, I, I can. So the best part too. Right, oh, right, right. Okay. That, that's the thing about live show. <laughs> yeah, we're live. We're live. So here we yeah, go. Yeah, we're Let's live. Go. I mean, if it, if it was pre-recorded, we we'll wait. <laughs> ah, he's back. Here he yes. is. Yes, <laughs> you're good, Gene. So I'm um, good. Yeah, pick up back right yes. right back right where you left off. <laughs> okay, good. So if if you give these young folks a job, something to do, they'll be preoccupied now with working. They wouldn't be out there, you know, trying to survive. It's the same thing you find here in the state, right? Any part of the United States, urban communities where you have folks who are full of energy and they're not working, what do they end up doing? They join gangs, right? They do bad stuff. 
But same thing in Haiti. If you have all of these folks who are not working, what are they gonna do? They're gonna try to try to survive. So for us, one of our biggest things to provide opportunities is employment. So I say to folks this, you know, it costs us $150 to employ um, a community health worker. We'll train that person and we'll employ them. So if you are inspired by the work that we do, or after this show, go on our website, see who we are, learn a little bit more about Capricorn. Consider giving a monthly donation for us to be able to train more folks and give them opportunity to work. That's how you make an impact in Haiti. Your impact in Haiti is not where you're going to, you know, uh, uh, um, give up on the organization $20, $10 to buy rice, right? <laughs> you, got, you came to say hi too, you know, it's the first show. He wants to let it be known that he's here too. Right. You know, it's not going to give a bag him, of rice. I'm mute here. <laughs> it's not going to give a, a bag of rice that somebody going to eat, you know, after two, three days, they're hungry again. So your biggest impact is truly to donate to sustainability. And that's what we do. As you guys are showing right now, these are all different programs that you can select from. So $25 will go a long way. $50 will go a long way. But it will help us to employ more folks and put them to work and have a bigger, greater impact on the entire community. Hmm. Nice. But you, I, I love it because we tend to think, like this is in the Haitian part, we tend to think somebody is coming to rescue to rescue us, to save us. Mm. Nobody's mm. coming. Mm. Nobody's coming. We're going to have to do it ourselves. So we're going to have to put our heads together, put our hands together, put our differences aside and say, listen, I really don't care what you think, what you want to do, but this right here, we got to take care of it. Because more people doing what you're doing, more people getting involved, and more people taking care of each other will make a big difference. Because the reality is there is no big um, big country or big organization that's going to come in and come rescue Haiti. Mm-hmm. Now, stop lying to yourself, right. okay? But us as Haitian, if you're honest and you're sincere and you really want to help, we have to be the example we, you know we we have to be the first one coming and say hey we got to put the work and that's what you did jump here you're like you know what forget this i'm not gonna wait on anybody i'm just gonna go ahead and and do what it do whatever happened it happened but i i, I got something to do i'll figure right. it out uh, along the way that's it and, and so you did this and 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 i'm hoping it just keep going to grow and, and more people do the same thing because that's Absolutely. what we need right now, man. Yes. Well, it's, it's right down your shirt. Be uncomfortable to grow. To grow. That's it. Okay. So I that's didn't know it. anything about non for profit, how you do that. Hmm. I just says, we're going to make something happen. So I got hmm. uncomfortable. I learned everything from setting up the organization, from learning about fundraising, from learning about marketing, knowing how to do the website. All of those things, I had to learn all of them, put board members together, you know. Luckily for me, the knowledge, part of the knowledge was there because I have a master's in public health. I have a master's mm-hmm. in community development, you know, so I have a lot of experience in that. But beside that, the other aspects of growing and building and implementing a program, I didn't know these things. You know, I was very comfortable, but I, had, I said, you know, no matter what, I'm going to learn it, I'm going to do it, we're going to be successful. So we put it out there, I put it out there, and I said, that's it, let's go. And then here we are, 14 years later, we're here. There has never been a year that you didn't, you didn't hear us doing work. We're not a mission organization. We are providing services in Haiti every single day, except um, Saturday and Sunday. I would, I would really say Sunday, because on Saturdays, the time that we are doing mobile clinics in other areas. So we are, mm-hmm. we've been functioning every single day since we started in February, 2009. Yeah. I, I'm a, uh, you probably don't have any other medical facility next to the facility where you have any closed one, per se. So the reason I'm mentioning that because I know whenever there's a medical facility for, for, for an area in Haiti, this is it. That's where everybody comes. So we're talking about uh, pregnant women, people with major injury who cannot get to the main hospital so are you are you seeing anything like this like where you guys getting an uh, influx of patients that you have to coordinate care for to get them to uh, 
to a higher echelon of care? We have. Um, luckily for us, um, through our partnership with Rotary International and Prospect Goshen Rotary Club um, in Kentucky, and also through a partnership with the Campion Rotary Club, we were able, um, and with our supporters, so it was a matching thing, where we were able to buy an, um, a, a vehicle we serve as a ambulance for us. really Zoe can on IET. Yeah. These are land cruisers. They are very durable. Um, so we have that. So whenever that we need to get somebody to the hospital for higher care, we use that to send. In fact, I'll tell you a story right now. Um, there's a woman who had lost her home during Hurricane Matthew in 2016. Then she lost her home again during, last year during the, the earthquake. And it's only her and her daughter. She's a single mother. Um, you know, she doesn't work. She's living in very... Uh, on a debt, you know, in, in, in poverty, you would say, right? Because she's not working, she's a single mother, and she's doing all that she can. And she felt like she was being belittled by the community. Basically, she lost hope. And one day she woke up after her daughter went to school. She broke a bottle, crushed it, mixed it with whatever, and drank all of those broken glass with Clorox. Mind blowing, unbelievable stuff. I mean, you could have made this stuff up. And next thing you know, she's now trying to kill herself. And then this is where the community came, and they called Kappa Care immediately. And I we dispatched our doctors uh, and nurses to her house, um, and we took her on the ambulance, and we brought her to the hospital. This is stuff that is not made up. We actually have videos of it. Once she got to the hospital, then they say, oh, where is her money? She needs to have money to get care because you can't just go to the hospital and you think you're going to get care like that. Care in, in hospitals are not free. And immediately, you know, um, our staff sent me a text and said, hey, we need money to get this lady care. I said, oh, no, we, you, you, were, you were you in um, the hospital. I won't say the hospital's name. I said, you are in such a hospital. I have contact with the director immediately. I sent a text to the director and said, hey, I have my staff in there with a lady who just tried to uh, attempt to kill herself. Please take care of all of her services. Do whatever that you can to save this woman's life, and they did. And here she is now surviving. And that's because of the, you know of the truck and of our partnership with Rotary International, Prospect Goshen, and folks like yourself who donate to the organization that put us in that position to have again equipment, right, to go and get provide this lady care. And you know after they heard, um, so with the funds that we received from the earthquake, we have also. Uh, built this lady a two-room home complete with flushing bath toilet solar panels and painted complete because uh, and, and that's important because oftentimes you hear um organization that builds folks home they built a little one room shack for somebody with no uh, uh latrines nothing and no power but this lady actually has uh, um solar panels on her home completely uh, uh, furnished by Kappa Kia with beds, painted, flushing bathroom. We mean that we did something that provided her with dignity and pride. And now she's actually has a little job in, in Fonflet where she's actually working to continue to, to now be able to continue to support herself and her daughter. And that's what you do, what you do. That's it. That's you know it. what I'm saying? Saving life, bro. Saving Save life. life. Saving yes. Life. yes. Yep. You saved her life. Oh my gosh, Gene! Listen, uh, shout out to all the work that you do. We cannot have thought about a better guest to have as our very first guest on Haitian Creators Live. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, man. We appreciate you. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, we had some a uh, few people tuning in saying hello. Anna says hello, Jean Pierre, and also I had I saw. I saw my mother. <laughs> my mother's on the <laughs> Facebook and my mother gave us the thumbs up. Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh Gene, any anything else you would like to share um with with our audience? What I say is, you know, um it's anything. What you believe is what you achieve. Um we often hear things are difficult. Well there's no you know, there's nothing that's um that is possible without efforts right so things are will forever changing so don't wait till you get rich to make an impact in the world you can make an impact now um 
you know, continue to support our work. I hope that you'll be, you know, you you be um, wanting more knowledge about who we are, what you do, what we do as an organization. That you'll go on the website, you'll see the work that we do, and you'll be inspired to support um, the work that we are doing. And you know, because that's just that's you know, not everyone is is, is um, how would I say born with a silver platter, right? With a silver spoon. Some of us are a little bit more fortunate. When we are, when God blessed us to put us in a position where we can help to to help others, it is definitely an obligation for us to do so. So for me, I'm not better than anybody who's in Haiti. I just I just happen to have gotten a chance that my mother moved to the United States and I got a chance to get an education and I didn't want to waste it. I didn't want to waste an opportunity to also help my country because there are so many smarter people living in Haiti who wish they could be in my position, but they not. So the fact that I got a chance to be here in this country, got an opportunity to get an education, I wanted to make it worthwhile and go back and contribute to Haiti. Contribute to Haiti. But not just to Haiti, but I also do work to other part of developing countries where I have other executives to uh, um, build their program, put things together. So basically giving back to the world. That is awesome. That is awesome. Johnny, anything? Man, I can't. That's premier guest no we have. Yeah, <laughs> premier <laughs> guest no. Listen, you just, you, you just like, <laughs> you, you just push the show all the way up. I mean, I, I, I'm listen. You, you just basically said this is the standard and this is the direction we're going, and yes, and I appreciate it, man. You, you're doing a lot of stuff, amazing work. And just continue what you do, and hopefully more people will be engaged. I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to open my pocketbook to Capo I, I have to tell you that because, you know, and that's why we, me and Fulgen will say, hey, more Haitians need to do more this type of show yes. because we, the only one who's going to support each other. That's that's mandatory for us. We cannot expect that from anywhere else. But to be yeah. able to know what's going on, you have to do things where you meet people like this, where you meet people like Jean-Pierre. You have to network with, with the people who's doing the work because when you look at Haiti, a lot of people ask the question, oh man, how can Haiti still stay strong? Well, Haiti stays strong because of people like this. Yes. Because... He's, he's not after the fame. He's not interested of being the president, vice president, minister, whatever. Right. He's just interested of taking care of the folks that he grew up with, that he cares about, and to make sure they come up in this life with dignity and respect. And that's the recipe. And I'm, I'm hoping more people are doing the same thing. And... And as we're going to Haitian Creators Live, we're bringing more people here who's doing the same quality of work or different type of work so we can get to network with one another and create this type of networking connection. And who knows? One day we have a Haitian Creators Live meetup. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's, it's amazing. And I, I'm, I'm thankful you took the time to come here and sit down and, and talk to us. I'm thankful to the people who show up under the live and who, who comment and who supporting us. And I'm also happy for those who's going to see this after because yes. who's going to look at this and we're going to say, oh, wow, those guys are really trying to build something. And and if you like what you see, just just join the tribe, you know, help us grow this and help us, you know, move forward. Jean-Pierre was our first guest and outstanding guest. Outstanding. All I'm saying, whoever's coming after Jean-Pierre, you have your guest. <laughs> <laughs> come, man, come correct. I'm, yeah, come correct, man. Come correct. Uh, I'm thankful, man. I appreciate all the things you're doing for, for all people. And I'm just saying keep pushing. And if you ever need anything, reach out to us. And if we can do it, you know, we'll do it. If we can, we'll be honest and say, hey, we can do it. But we'll... We'll always provide you a solution. We'll find somebody to help you out. Yes. That's just that's just how it is. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and this is although this is the first, it certainly won't be the last time where we have more conversations on Haitian Creators Live with you. Um and, and so we can have more eyes on what Capricare is doing and have more people supporting you um beyond measure. So once again, Gene, we really appreciate you. Um and I look forward to knowing you for another twelve years and beyond. Thank you so much, Fuji. I appreciate yes. you as well.
Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so stick, stick, stick around, Gene. Uh, we've reached the end. Johnny, this was great. We, you know, this was excellent. Amazing first guest, Jean-Pierre Louis, the founder and CEO of Capra Care. Definitely check out capracare.org if you would like more information and if you would like to support Capra Care. This is a trusted venue in the Haitian community that you can support with your eyes closed and know that your money and your in-kind is going towards a very solid cause. It is an outstanding show. Like I said, man, I'm thankful for Jean Pierre Bell and everybody who came up and, and, and showed us some love, continue to do so. We love you guys and uh, I hope you guys love us the same way. And full gents, listen, we have to be uncomfortable to grow. It took That's a lot it. for me to come over here to do this and That's for it. us to connect yes. and, and, and make this become a reality. So yeah. Man, and, and I appreciate it. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, same here. And the only and the only way to do it is to just do it. Just do it. Exactly. That's just do it. That's it. And we're doing it's that it. simple. Just yes. grab the camera, put it in front of you. Let's, let's just and get do it, it done and get it done. That's it. <laughs> right. That's how you do it. Uh, so All right. again, thank you, everybody. Have an amazing Friday evening. Have an amazing weekend. And we'll be back with more amazing guests, more amazing Haitian creators and celebrating what they do. Until then, peace. See ya.